Can creativity be measured? If so, then what do we measure? And why would you want to measure creativity anyway? But first, let's start with an out of context question. How would you measure this apple? I asked a friend of mine who was in the produce business, how would you measure an apple? And he said, oh, we have our ways. I'll give you five examples. And then I asked him, what, what instruments do you use to measure an apple? I then asked, what information are you exactly capturing when you are measuring an apple? And what conclusions do you typically draw from this information? Ultimately, I have to meet a customer's criteria for what he or she considers an acceptable apple for a given market. Wow, who would have thought so much goes into measuring an apple? Now, let's consider how we might measure creativity. Begin with your definition. How would you measure your definition of creativity? In any field, whether it is business, education, medicine, where you start is hopefully with your theoretical position. How you define it, how you put parameters around it, and these various parameters lead to different ways to measure it. When you start looking into measures and you look at the measures that are out there, often those measures flow from some theory, some theoretical family that attempts to define what is creativity. Therefore, creativity measurement focuses on the act of collecting both quantitative and qualitative data through a variety of methods that allows researchers, or then allows researchers and practitioners to assess creative behavior, outcomes, and situations. It's natural at this point to ask these two remaining questions. Can creativity be measured? And why measure creativity? Like the apple, I'm sure some of you were surprised like many, like me, at the number of ways to measure an apple. We also learned from my friend and the reasons to measure an apple. Well, I'm pleased to report that creativity can be measured. In fact, we are literally surrounded by measures of creativity, and there are a variety of tools to measure creativity. Some of these tools, also known as measurement instruments, include questionnaires, checklists, rating scales, and interviews. Qualitatively, creativity can be measured by participant observation strategies, investigative journalism, field studies, consensual agreement, and conversation analysis. Well, if creativity can be measured, then what exactly can be measured? The measurement methods that exist today can be applied to measure, for example, aspects of the creative process, traits of a creative person, qualities of a creative product, or factors in the work environment that are conducive to creative performance. The challenge, therefore, is not about finding an instrument or a method for measuring creativity, but instead it's about selecting the measure that best suits the desired goals. You want to measure creativity in products? There's a measure for that, called the, creati the Creative Product Analysis Model developed by Sue Biesemer. Or you can take a more qualitative approach and apply the consensual assessment technique developed by Teresa Mobley. You want to measure creative potential of a person? You administer the Torrance Test of Creative Thinking, developed by Paul Torrance. Or maybe you want to look at creative problem-solving preferences. Here you can use Foresight, developed by Gerard Puccio. That's my boss. I felt compelled to stick that one in there. You desire to measure creative work environment? You can use the Creative Climate Questionnaire, developed by Joran Ekval. What about measuring the creative process? Here you can administer Min Bassett's Simplex model. That is just to name a few. In fact, the text I use in class references 250 measures related to creativity. So, you can see why we say you should be specific about what you want to measure. But to do that, it's first necessary to understand why you want to measure creativity. And then determine what specific aspects of creativity you wish to measure. Now, what about the third question? Why measure creativity? A few examples. Uh, provided by Donald Tuppinger, who's president of the Center for Creative Learning, provides the following. To advance knowledge regarding the nature of creativity, thereby overcoming myths and, mis and misconceptions. To understand and predict employees' creative productivity. Another one is to discover the various ways in which people exhibit their creative behavior. To discover the characteristics of creative products is another one. 
to develop an understanding of the environmental factors that facilitate or impede development of creative potential. How about this one? To determine the impact of formal instruction in creativity by comparing data gathered before and after instruction or between trained and untrained groups. So there you have it. Can creativity be measured? Yes. And now, now that we know, then what do we measure? And why would we want to measure creativity? In an interview with Ken Robinson, an author and speaker on creativity, he asserted that if you look at the resulting strains on our political and financial institutions, on healthcare, on education, there really is not a time in history where you could look back and say, well, of course, this is the same thing all over again. It is not. This is really new, and we're going to need every ounce of ingenuity, imagination, and creativity to confront these challenges and these problems. So if that is the case, and I do believe that is the case, then how will we know if we are tapping into every ounce of ingenuity, imagination, and creativity? Well, we need to measure it. Thank you.